unite against cancer. President of the Chinese Anti Cancer Association, a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, an international member of the USA National Academy of Medicine, a foreign associate of the French National Academy of Medicine, and a lot of many accolades. He has a long term interest in both and based research of digestive diseases and has been committed to the theoretical research and clinical practice of holistic integrative medicine. He obtained a lot of national grants, including the National High Tech Research and Development Program of China, National Basic Research Program of China, and many key prizes and in National Science and Technology Awards. As the editor-in-chief, he has been, he has authored 33 books on gastroenterology and oncology. As the first or corresponding editor, he has published more than 725 papers on the on international journals such as National. Uh, gastroenterohepatological <laughs> journal, the National Clinical Practical Oncology, the Lancet, etc. His organization, like I said, is the Chinese Anti Cancer Association, and his focal area is cancer prevention, treatment, holistic integrative oncology and public education. I must say at this point that I was privileged to be a guest at the last CACA meeting that was held in China, a really massive meeting and showed the great mobilization force as well as a lot of insights into the research that is being carried out in China under the leadership of Professor Fan. So today we're going to speak to him to gain a little insight about this um, great man and the work that he has been doing in cancer control. So thank you very much, Professor. I want to start by asking you to please tell us about your role in CACA and a summary of the, China, of the landscape of oncology in China. Okay. So, uh, dear Professor Janet, the uh, Sink of the Bakuta, Bakutu, they are my good friend. So, thank you for interviewing. Right? So, uh, about your question, it's a very, very good uh, question. So that is also many people ask me, uh, ask me the uh, uh, very, uh, very often. So, um, as the president of uh, China. Uh, uh, the president of uh, China Anti Cancer Association is that our vision is to unite and support cancer communities to reduce the cancer burden in China, to promote the greater equity, and ensure that cancer control remains a priority on the national health and development agenda. Our mission is to improve cancer prevention and treatment via organizing academic conferences, strengthening public, um, <clears throat> as, uh, strengthening public education, promoting CACA guidelines for holistic integrative management of cancer, and conducting international exchanges. China says a positive and involving situations in its cancer prevention and treatment in recent years. With its overall five-year survival rate for cancer patients up from the 30.9% in 2000, 
2023. China has been improving its prevention and control system with a comprehensive cancer prevention and control network at the national provincial pro, uh, provincial and uh, prefectural level basically established. The expansion and the balance the distribution of a cancer prevention and control of medical resources have been continuously promoted. For example, the screening coverage of a breast and the cervical cancer has expanded to 90% of China's districts and counties. We have achieved a preliminary progress in recent years in addressing the challenge of cancer with the expansion of cancer screening programs in China, tumors are being detected at the early stage. Patients now have access to a wider range of treatment options, including surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, as well as uh, traditional Chinese medicine. However, China still bears heavy cancer burden with high incidence and mortality rates. About one out of four cancer patients in the world is from China. About one out of three patients died of cancer is from China. There are about 8,000 patients died of cancer every day. The cancer burden in China is characteristic, uh, characterized by high incidence rate, high mortality rate, high economic burden, and no survival rate. According to the statistics in 2023, that there are 4.8 million new cases, and the number of deaths is about 3 million. It cost over 5.4 trillion on national health expenditures, and the five-year survival rate is the 43.7%. So that is my answer. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. That's really very, uh, very totally encompassing response and highlighting not just the high burden of cancer in China, but also the high investment and the economic value that the investment is bringing. That's also seeing earlier detection and low, higher survival rates. Um, I also know from my own interactions that a lot of um, innovation and production is coming out of the Chinese continent, Chinese of China with um, things like vaccine production and more cost-effective diagnostic platforms, especially in the field of cervical cancer and molecular technology. Um, in your response, you mentioned uh, a lot of the work that you have done, and I also mentioned in your summary. But I want us to focus a bit on an area that I know has been one of your passions, that is Chinese uh, holistic care in reducing the burden of China. What do you what, how would you speak to the world on the value of Chinese holistic medicine uh, and including the scientific evidence that you have for your response, please, Professor? Yes, that's a very good and important question. That is a holistic integrative oncology, uh, which uh, may be in the uh, Western country, so uh, and, uh, they call it uh, the complementary uh, medicine or alternative medicine. But uh, uh, so we uh, uh, okay, okay, the, uh, the holistic integrative medicine. As you know, before the Western medicine was introduced, uh, in China, we had used uh, Chinese traditional medicine to treat cancer for long, long years with also the uh, good results. 
there is a great amount of essence in traditional Chinese medicine, TCM. For instance, we found that arsenic trioxide, which was used in TCM 2,000 years ago, can treat acute promyelocytic leukemia APR with a great effect. Now, it is used worldwide with a courage result. Another example is atomicinin. It is extracted from some plants and can be used to treat malaria. And one of the doctors, this Mr. Yu Yu Tu, has won the Nobel Prize because of it. Now, it is also found that anti-misanin can reverse not only the bacteria drug resistance, but also the tumor cell drug resistance. Besides, the TCM indicated 2,000 years ago that microbiome can uh, treat diseases. If the chemotherapy doesn't work for tumor and the multiple drug resistance occurs, we don't need to deal with uh, um, uh, tumor cells. We just need to uh, change the intestinal microbiota and the drug resistance of tumor cells can be reversed. In particular, acupuncture exercises and uh, dietary therapy uh, in TCM have great effect on the rehabilitation of uh, cancer patients. I advocate for use in traditional Chinese medicine in combination with the Western medicine, they are complementary to each other and we need to integrate their strengths. For example, TCM can be used to uh, enhance the efficacy and uh, reduce the toxicity of a Western medicine. We have integrated the TCM with the Western medicine in our Kaka guidelines. In combination, they can achieve the great effect on the holistic integrative management of a cancer. In other words, the Western medicine its own also need integration of a knowledge and a practice, which can promote the better result. So, um, so that is uh, with the holistic integrative oncology. I mean, uh, you know, the concept uh, proposed by Chinese doctor, it is really important. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.